Today's episode of the XP is brought to you by Loot Crate, monthly gaming and geek gear brought directly to your door. Sign up using the link in the description below. What's up, attackers? Kirk here with your weekly MMO news for October 9th, 2015. On today's episode, we have a couple new, or at least new to you, I think, games that we can start looking forward to, as well as another MMO death, which is becoming increasingly more common. All that and more on today's episode of the XP. WebZen's Asian-inspired fantasy MMO Asta, The War of Tears and Winds, has just announced its first beta test, which is scheduled for this November. What's really cool about this beta, and we'd hope that many games would do this too, is that the beta test is fairly long and mostly unrestricted. Starting on November 3rd, all players with a free WebZen account will be able to check the game out, so that's pretty cool, and we'll get to check out all this cool stuff like character creation, talent trees, PvP battlegrounds, crafting systems, and all that good stuff. Unfortunately, all the progress will be wiped at the end of the beta, but I guess that's to be expected. You can check out the sort of brand new trailer playing above my voice right now. A Bethesda spokesperson recently spoke to an Australian video game site, Progress Bar, about why Battlecry didn't make an appearance at the recent EB Expo, and the statement given is less than promising. And I quote, We have concerns about the Battlecry game and whether it is meeting the objectives we have for it. We are evaluating what improvements the game needs to meet our quality standards. The studio remains busy during this process on multiple projects. So I've got to play Battlecry at the past. So I've got to play Battlecry at the past two E3s and was less than impressed. And it doesn't really help that this arena shooter game genre is now the new MOBA, with titles like Gigantic and obviously Overwatch from Blizzard. Oh, and Paladins from High Res Studios. I tend to think the game is too far along to scrap, but the competition is definitely starting to heat up. Might as well head back to WebZen here for a moment. The studio also announced this week that their free-to-play hack-and-slash MRPG Eloa, or Elite Lords of Alliance, will be heading to their first North American and European closed beta coming up on October 13th. As with Asta, which I mentioned in the first article, anyone with a WebZen account will be able to check out Eloa, and you can even download the client today so that you're ready to go on October 13th for the approximately week-long beta. Also, all progress will be wiped at the end of the beta, but you can still sign up at eloa.webzen.com. Sad news here, I think. Not really, though. Dragon's Prophet, the immensely unoriginal dragon MRPG from Runewaker Entertainment and Daybreak Games, will no longer be active as of November 16th. At least here in North America, as that was Daybreak's geographic reign on the game. So maybe someone else will pick it up, although I'm not sure why they would. I've always joked with colleagues that Dragon's Prophet was SOE's, yes, I know it's Daybreak now, It was SOE's least liked game and was often the most overlooked at conventions like E3s and the PAXs of the world. Heck, even at the now defunct SOE lives the past few years, very little was ever shown off from Dragon's Prophet. Just a sad, sad game. Sorry, I won't miss it. You probably won't either. ESTsoft has announced that the Ruin of the Gods update to Cabal 2 will be going live on October 14th. Ruin of the Gods is designed specifically for players of level 40 and up, and features the Grey Canyon Zone. Journeying through the Grey Canyon will offer players the opportunity to level from 40 to 45 through three brand new dungeons complete with quests and gear drops. According to ESTsoft, these dungeons offer the most challenging game content to date. The dungeons are Silent Snowfield for level 43, Ancient Academy for level 45, and Tomb of Cain, which requires the completion of the first two. You can check out that update going live next week. Lastly, I'll quickly mention that Block and Load from Jagex, the what I thought was already a free-to-play shooter, is officially going free-to-play. I guess I assumed it was already free-to-play because it just looks so, ugh, I don't know, uninteresting? I mean, a shooter with Minecraft-like qualities, how many of those are there now? Um, Roblox, 
Guncraft, Q-World, Apes and Spades, Trove, oh, and Minecraft. So yeah, Block and Load is now officially free to play, and you can get it on their official website or on Steam. That's all I've got for you today. Please leave this video a like, a subscribe, a comment, and I hope you have a great fucking weekend. Cheers. Welcome back, Attack. Today we're going to be talking about the top 10 free-to-play MMOs for this year, for 2015. And I think across all the genres for free-to-plays, we've seen so much innovation in MOBAs, in MMOs, in, like, card games. We've seen so many new things this past year, and hopefully, maybe, probably so, 2015 is going to be just as exciting. This is our...